Hi. So in this session, I want to take us through how you link your repetitive access with Python. Okay. So most of the the things that we'll be doing, we will be of course grabbing data, uh, big data or raw market data using repetitive, and we will be analyzing it uh, using Python. So we've already got Anaconda fired up here in the background. So first thing to do then to get this link is download and install the desktop or OX version of Refinitive on your machine. Okay. So once you've got it, sign yourself in and always select the automatically sign me in option. So let me show you what that means. So I've already uh, installed access to Refinitiv. I'm using the, the icon uh, version of it. So what I would do is, of course, when I come to my start menu and I look for icon, uh, in your case, Refinitiv, because I've signed in uh, automatically or I've, or I've selected the sign me in automatically version, once I click on that, it should automatically log me in. All right, so see if it's done that. Yes, it has. Uh, so I can see it has the two bar would, would pop up in a minute. Okay, so I've got access already. And so I've signed myself in into a uh, Refinitive, uh, in, in this case, Icon. And I need to keep that working in the background because what Icon will do is Icon is going to sit on top of that so that when I write my codes, it, did I say Icon? Python will be sitting on top of the re Refinitive product. So that when I write my codes in in Python, of course, in our case, uh, using Jupyter Notebooks, the Python would then use my access key to grab the data from Refinitive. Okay, so how do I link the two then? Uh, way to do that is to generate a key. So once I've logged into uh, Refinitive, I need to set for the key generator. Right, so I need to type in here, key generator. And that's an app. Right, so that app pops up. And when it pops up, I, I mean, in my case, because I've already generated the key, I'm not going to click it now because if I click on the the key app key generator, you're going to see my key. And that's the unique identifier that you should keep to yourself. So I'm not going to click through now, but in your case, because you don't have uh, an app key generated, you'll be invited or be a tiny menu here for you to click through name it right name the the key give it a name and automatically what would happen is Refinitive will generate that key for you and that will be stored under your login okay so first thing right keep Refinitive uh fired up in the background use the app generator and generate your key once you've got your key uh, the best thing to do, the most sensible thing to do is to uh, create a text file that has your key in it. So the way you do that, uh, you can use just use any, any uh, text uh, file app. So I'm just going to, uh, let's say, let's say text file. I'm just going to use a notepad. Okay. So if you... Uh, if I open the notepad, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create uh, a text file here. 
into which I'll copy my unique key, the key generated by Refinitiv. But I'm going to head that, I'm just going to head that with the name. So I'll call that icon into square brackets. And then I would say uh, app underscore ID is equal to and then I'll copy, I'll just literally just copy that app key and paste it here. Is that okay? So I'll paste it there and I'm just going to give this file a name. I'll save it as, right, of course as a text file, uh, but then I'll save it as CFG uh cfg let, let's call it icon icon dot cfg dot text okay and save it save that text file in the folder that you're going to be working from okay so the folder that you'll be firing up jupyter notebook from where you'll be running your jupyter notebook from save that text file there. Why are you doing that? You're doing that because the key is, of course, hidden within this text file. You're going to be writing a code in Jupyter Notebook that would say, grab that key and use it to open the door to Refinitiv. Okay, so you can see I've got, I've got one created here. I've got my text file created already. So I'm not going to save this, All right? So save yours and and then you're ready to now go in and uh fire up jupyter notebook and then we get going okay so let's come back in here now then so i've come to uh jupyter notebook and i'll launch it Right, so I've launched it and I need to open uh, the folder that I want to be working from. I've got too many folders here. I can hear you saying, you need to tidy up, Charles. Yes, that's fine, I will sometime in the future. So come to this year and go into that file. Uh, let me just use that. So yeah, I'm going to be working from here, okay? So I need to create a new Python notebook. Right, so I need to create a header for myself. What do you think I should be writing in here? Should be saying something like, uh, linking Python and Refinitiv, Refinitiv, and so what do I do? Yeah, I can write anything here. What can I write? Just to prompt myself, uh, access to Refinitiv already say access key to Refinitiv already generated. Okay, so what, what am I going to do now? Uh, first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, pip install some necessary modules or packages. Okay, so uh, that's just uh, some notes for myself. Remember how I how I did this? So I've changed the nature of this cell from a code to a markdown uh, cell. Okay, so I'm just going to insert a cell below. 
and in here I'm going to uh, import or pip install some necessary modules or packages right of course the very the first and most important one is to have the the package for icon installed uh, you wouldn't have it I think I have it on on this uh, computer let me just check and see well I mean system will tell me so I'm just going to import I'm going to import icon as EK and I'm going to import numpy as NP and I'm going to import pandas as PD and I'm going to import cufflinks as CF and I'm going to import config parser as CP of course I can I can write some comments here can't I I can say icon uh, wrapper for Python and of course we all know uh, numpy uh, numpy cool for numbers you can write any comments there but you need to precede your comments with the hash uh, symbol anyway so so that's fine so now I'm I'm just going to run the, these imports right if I haven't already pip installed any of these packages there will be an error and all I have to do then is I have to go to uh, my uh, anaconda prompt and then use the pip install to install it so let's run if I don't get an error that means I've already installed them so that symbol there means that the installation is going on oh there's no error uh, so I've already done this well in your case if you get an error don't panic you, remember you don't panic when you see errors what you do is you come to your anaconda prompt and you basically just do your pip install so for example for 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 you you have to do the the, the pip install for icon All right so let me try that now and see what comes up so i'm trying to install it so it goes through it and then it tells me charles why have you asked me to do all of this because the requirement is already satisfied that means i've got it already All right so i don't need to worry okay you will have to do that and i suspect you will have to do that for cufflinks and also for the config parser i mean what are these these two are very crucial uh, packages for dealing with scientific numbers so when you have big numbers number crunch and things numpy and pandas are very cool for that cufflinks will help you with uh visualizations that are malleable you can adjust them very easily and the config parser uh, is going to help us pull in the the the, the text file that we have a, a icon key hidden inside remember good so we've already done a, a pip installing of necessary packages uh, next thing then is to go and bring in right switch on icon right link icon or refinitive I should say and Python so let's bring up some cells below and let's create a variable that we call CP dot config parser config parser right 
and then we would say please read so read the the name of the text file that we are uh, keeping our key within so we have to put that in quotation I think we called it icon didn't we, we call it icon did we call it icon icon dot cfg dot txt well only time will tell uh, so let's run this I mean if if I've got this name wrong there will be an error oh I got it right right so it's read it right it's gone into uh, the text file that we, we created and it's read the key right so uh, yeah please we don't need you now so let's go down then and what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, get ourselves some data right so we now we're going to say so icon so it's just like calling him icon set up key right cfg and we have the name in there uh, icon and the app id i think that was what we had in the file app id if i remember in here i think this is we had icon as a header and we have the app id right so it's all set up yet so it's read it so now then we can collect some data so everything is set up so now this this icon worksheet uh, or, or codes as you call them is reaching out to the referentive that's working in the background we haven't named this right let's name it let's give it a name uh, how do you want to name this uh, linking Refinitive Python. Okay. So as an example, let's grab some data. What data do you let's grab some Apple data? So let's call that call that variable data. And we use the get time series. So we we, we tell an icon to create or grab a time series of apple uh apple apple so what's that that's the ticker for apple hopefully i've got it right well we'll have an error uh, if if i'm wrong we'll have an error so we I mean in that time series we have to tell uh, icon or refinitive the the ticker which is the identifier for the instrument we also have to specify the fields that we we want filled and for now we will just go for all fields right so we would say yeah give us everything okay and we will say start date when do we want to start we probably want to start from whatever date 2017 january and of course then you can imagine we have to give it the end date and date What should the end date be? I think the end date better be yesterday. So that will be the 30th of whenever. 2017. 
is 2020 is a year. Okay, so you, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm just filling this up. Uh, you can, you can give it any dates. Let's run. And if we don't get an error, right? So there is an error, uh, and it's telling us the the error is about that guy, right? It should be zero. Okay, so I. It should be O is the is the is the answer. I put a zero instead of an O. Uh, in a subsequent uh, session or recording, we will have to talk about tickets and identifiers. That's very important. So we have to talk have a whole session on symbology, uh, the use of symbols in the market. Okay, so I had to sort that out. I I had it wrong, and you may be guessing. Uh, so what's happened? Remember, because we haven't told python to, to show us the data it's not showing them to us so let's just say uh show us what data you've got okay if we ask it for the data it will then tell us so you can see it's gone to january 2017 and he's smart he knows that the first two days the first two days of 2017 we're not trading days so it's given us the, the most relevant uh, high close low open count and volume of trades in in the shares of Apple from the third of Jan and it's come all the way to 30th of November okay so we've got it in there but this is cluttering this the space a bit right we don't want uh, we don't want him to show us all that data. So I've, I've just hashed it. Uh, he's not happy. Right, don't worry. Anyway, it's there. So let's, let's, what can we do with this? I mean, I've essentially shown you what I wanted to show you. So now you can see, once you fire up Refinitiv in the background, once you've generated the, the app key, and once you've uh, created a text file, put your key in there, installed the icon uh, packages and the other relevant packages that we we showed up here and once you've linked your uh, your text file with the uh, with python you can then get some data now let's just do something with this data what do you want to do uh, why don't we just create a, a quick uh maybe quick visualization all right so let's insert below uh usually we would say set the uh the conf the configuration uh the config of files set it to offline so that you can uh you can see the the end result thereof okay so now let me just grab uh, a quick visualization of the the column right so this is a data frame this this output of data is a data frame that has rows of course and columns we want to come in here and subset just the close column I want to just grab the close column and how do we do that we just going to do that uh, by as you can see here using the square bracket and naming the column so the column that we want uh, is the close column so I have to put that in inverted commas and go close and this bit here goes into that data grabs the close and i want it to create a plot for me right i want it to create a, a plot for me 
So what do we think will happen when we run that? Well, I haven't really given it the command. Uh, I should put the double brackets in front, of course, and then it will go to work. Okay. You can see it's done a beautiful job, hasn't it? So with that tiny bit of coding, we've got an image that has plotted and you can see the work of the calf links here, right? So this graph is really that flexible uh it's annotated i mean with the time and everything and we can even do some even more cool things we can visualize it differently uh by exporting it uh, uh good so that is even more uh presentable isn't it for for other purposes so the purpose of this video was to uh, quickly show you how to link your refinitive with Python, how to grab data, and how to, how to start doing some uh, cool stuff. So I'll catch up with you and we'll do more.